Hi, I'm David with DroneSense, and today I'm going to run you through flight planning for mapping missions in the DroneSense application. I'm already logged into the DroneSense app, and I've selected an intersection in Boulder, Colorado that I know from experience uh, experiences a fairly high number of serious traffic accidents. I'm in the hybrid map. And again, we've zoomed in, uh, you know, fairly tight over this particular intersection. I do have a drone connected and I am uh, currently sharing my RC Pro screen with you all to walk you through this process. I'm going to go ahead and click on flight planning, the upper left hand side of the application. And I'm going to go to setup. Now, because a drone is connected, it is showing the hardware. It's auto populating the hardware information. We are going to default to the wide angle lens. And again, it's important on a drone with a wide angle and a zoom uh, camera that we want to map on the wide angle. We need to know the sensor resolution and field of view in order to accurately calculate the overlaps. Uh, you just can't do that on a zoom lens. So again, we're on the Mavic 3 Thermal wide camera and we're going to go over to actions and it's going to tell me what to do. Go ahead and select an action from the toolbar. So we're going to click on the icon marker and we're going to click on the survey mission and there's just some feedback it says tap on map to add survey i'm going to go ahead and tap it's going to drop that basic uh, polygon down let's say we just wanted to rescale that polygon just a little bit let's say this crash happened kind of right in the middle of the intersection we want to go ahead and uh, just capture a little bit more of that i always like to have more more data than i need and there's the basics of the polygon. As we come over to the left-hand side, we do have survey preset outputs. You can see that we have PIX4D React. Uh, we have a custom, we have a 3D ortho and a search and rescue. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and, and click uh, custom as I wanna enter the parameters because I know what I need to do for this mapping mission. Uh, having run missions on this intersection before, I know that we are safe flying at, uh, we're going to say 80 feet. The highest ground-based obstacle is significantly lower than that. I think 80 feet is a reasonable, safe AGL to execute this mission at. Um, 10 miles an hour at 80 feet is just going to be too fast in my estimation. Uh, remember, the rule of thumb in this case is low and slow. We want those images to be crisp and clear so they can be imported into PIX4D or the software of your choosing. In this case, you can also adjust the ground sampling distance. If you happen to know that your mission needs a specific spatial resolution or output resolution, you can go ahead and change the GSD to reflect what your requirements are for that particular mission. You can see the gimbal angle in my case is 75 degrees. This may default to 90, but I used this recently and I had this set at 75. And I'm going to explain why here in just a moment. So we've got those basic parameters set. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to slow that down. I'm going to do six. Let's do five miles an hour in this case. Again, um, it's a, a fairly uh, uh, low mission. It's not a huge area. Let's see how long this mission is going to take. Uh, right now, it's estimating the survey time is going to be 14 minutes. What I'm going to do is once I've entered those parameters, I'm going to click on overlaps. Now I'm going to set my front and side overlap. And in this case, I'm going to use 80% overlap front and side. I'm also going to check the 3D mode button is I want to capture the data in both directions. So this is that grid mission. Um, I know that I do want to output a point cloud with the data that's collected here. So I want to collect that or uh, capture that again in both directions. So you can adjust the survey angle if you want a custom angle. There's just a lot of things you can do here. Um, so again, my drone is GPS denied. If the drone were uh, input and ready to go, you could basically, once we save this, uh, you could, uh, we're gonna add it to the plan. You could execute from this point. Again, the drone is GPS denied. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this up to the cloud. And this is really one of the superpowers of drone sense that we can create this mission really offline or without a drone connected. We can then upload it to the cloud. When that drone asset comes into position uh, near the intersection and you're ready to launch, you can pull the mission down from the cloud and then autonomously execute the mission. So we have agencies that will actually map out or pre-map 
uh, let's say the top 10, 15, 20 intersections in their jurisdiction. So it's all ready to go. It's really efficient for the team. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And I'm gonna call this flight plan. Oh, let's just call it test in this case. And we're gonna go ahead and save that to the cloud. That box is checked. So we have a number of missions uh, here in the DroneSense web platform, and that's why things just took a little bit longer. You are most likely not going to see that. Uh, now, again, this is a very long mission. This is going to be a two battery mission here. You can see it is uh, 42 minutes, uh, but the drone uh, will stop, return to home at the low battery. You can swap and then return the drone uh, to the previous point where it left off and resume the mission. Okay, that is the basics of setting up a survey style mission. I want to go ahead and show you uh, what it's like to set up an orbit mission as well. We will often fly this kind of what we call nadir or survey mission coupled with an oblique mission, an orbit mission to capture additional photographs, generally at a lower uh, elevation or even multiple lower elevations as well. So I'm going to clear the flight plan. I'm not going to save the changes uh, as we're just uh, as we're just testing this right now. And we're going to come back into the flight plan and I'm going to click on an orbit mission. And I'm going to go ahead and click that here. Um, as I click over the map, this is again going to default to a radius of 328 feet. We're just going to get a little more detailed. Um, I'm going to say in this case, the vehicles were right kind of over uh let's say about here um in the intersection actually let's just come out here right about there in the intersection we're going to come down there's a uh yeah 59 foot radius now we're actually going to fly this much much lower we're going to fly this at 40 feet and again obviously you want to make sure this area of operations is clear of any ground-based obstacles um the speed is going to be way too fast let's bump that down into um Oh, let's fly that at four miles an hour around this. We have the additional, uh, the drone heading, uh, the clockwise rotation. You can choose which direction you want it to go, but we do want to enable the take photos. Now, the gimbal is going to default to 45 degrees. Um, that may or may not work. You just may need to test that as you're making sure that you get the field of view uh, centered here. And as the drone now is going around this orbit at the speed that you predetermine, it is automatically taking pictures around this as well. So we're going to go ahead and add that to the plan. And now we have this plan ready to go. We can do the same thing. If the drone is connected, it's ready to execute. We can go ahead and say, go now, autonomously fly this mission. Or we can go ahead and save this, save it up to the cloud, and then pull it back down. Um, I know this was a lot of information to cover today. As always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to the DroneSense customer success or support team. We are here to help. Thank you so much and stay safe.